Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Anna Manuel. The Corning city manager recently gave his State of the City address. Big Fox's Josh Feldberg reports on the key takeaways. Corning has some outstanding opportunities ahead, according to city manager Mark Reichman. For the 26th time, Mark Reichman delivered the State of the City address. In his address, Reichman emphasized the city's public safety initiatives, the rising stray cat population, and Corning's financial situation. The Corning Police Department will see some new upgrades this year to help increase public safety. The department will receive new live scan fingerprint equipment to meet the state's latest standards. This will assist police with background checks and criminal identifications. The department will also be replacing aging dash cameras in the city's police cruisers. Lastly, Corning police are well on their way to establishing a canine unit. Manager Reichman also spoke on the city's efforts to control the stray cat population. Corning is accepting applications for the city's new spay and neuter clinic that will start in the beginning of March. Reichman said it may take a number of years before the stray cat population is under control. Reichman also delivered a report on Corning's financial position. According to Reichman, the city's finances are stable. He continued by saying the city's financial planning has helped position us to manage periods of instability. For a 13th year in a row, there will be no additional funds granted to Corning through state funding. The city's funding has been reduced by 7.5% since 2009. Corning will undergo many other changes throughout this next year as plans continue to develop throughout the city. Josh Feldberg, Big Fox News, Corning. The Corning Police Department will soon have a canine unit. Our Maggie Hall spoke to the two officers who are dog handler candidates about what this unit will mean to the department and the community as a whole. The Corning Police Department will soon have its very first canine unit. Today, I bring you more information on how this will help the department better protect and serve the community. Sergeant Tanner Rarick and Officer Christopher Clare have worked for years to bring the unit to the department. Uh, so him and I, along with the union, kind of took the lead in getting everything together, getting some ideas, and uh, promoting the, the program to the city. The canine will be a narcotics dog, helping battle the overdose crisis that our community is facing. The uh, canine is going to be a narcotics detection dog and there's been a significant increase in overdoses in Subac County and surrounding areas so this will assist in getting some of the dangerous dr drugs off the street so if there's less access to the drugs hopefully there'll be less less overdoses overall will we'll assist in the public safety in that aspect. It's hoped that the dog will help the public be more receptive to the presence of officers. Not just having a uniformed police officer walking around where maybe people don't want to approach us and maybe have a conversation. Just taking a, a dog, you know, man's best friend, putting this in a crowd and now we're just way more approachable. With the training of the handler and the dog, the canine unit isn't expected to hit the streets for a couple more months. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Corning. Guthrie's Hospital Systems is inviting future nurse residents to attend a nurse resident hiring event on Friday, March 3rd. Guthrie's Nurse Residency Program is offering direct hire and rotation positions. The event will allow nurse residents to visit and meet with members of the hospital staff and receive a tour of the hospital's many departments. The Patterson Auditorium in Sarah will host the event from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on March 3rd. Wegmans has announced that they will now accept EBT SNAP benefits as a payment for online grocery orders. When ordering online through the Wegmans app, customers can filter for items that are SNAP eligible. A spokesperson for Wegmans said the new EBT SNAP online ordering system will increase access to affordable, nutritious foods. The Arnott Ogden Medical Center lost power today. As of noon, the entire hospital was running on a generator. The hospital released a statement announcing that an employee was injured during the course of the power failure investigation. Additionally, due to air handling units being affected by the power outage, ER patients and staff had to be evacuated due to smoke. Big Fox News will bring you updates as provided by the medical center. The newest winter festival will begin in Corning this Saturday. This year we are launching a new event. It's happening this coming weekend on Saturday and it's called Chill. 
because of the time of year, obviously, uh, and with this crazy weather we're having, we were going to have snowboarding and all of that. Uh, there's no snow, but that's not going to stop us. We are going to have wonderful ice carvings throughout the district, starting on Bridge Street and on to Market Street. We're also going to have a life-size air hockey game, wicked cool, and skee-ball game. So we're kind of excited about that, and we don't need snow to make that happen. All activities during chill are free. Local restaurants will also have chili pairings on Saturday and Sunday. The event begins at 10 a.m. on Saturday and can be found on Bridge Street and part of Market Street. Hundreds of concerned residents turned up at East Palestine High School last night, hoping to get some answers about that train derailment that happened earlier this month. Lucas Tomlinson has more from East Palestine, Ohio. Why is the company not here? Because they're scared for their safety. Hundreds of anxious residents packed a school gym here in East Palestine on Wednesday night, looking for answers almost two weeks after a huge train derailment released hazardous chemicals into their town, contaminating much of the surrounding area. But there were notable absences from the town hall meeting, including the rail operator, Norfolk Southern. We're trying to get information out to our citizens. Everybody's concerned. I'm concerned. But... You know, it's not Norfolk Southern here, it's the EPA. Also not attending, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. The mayor says he's had limited contact with the White House, leaving folks here frustrated, angry, and complaining about a lack of information from the feds and Norfolk Southern. It was just a big runaround. Like, I feel like a lot of the questions that were asked were people's rantings. The answers that were given were things that we've already been told. State officials in the EPA say the water and air are both safe, but residents here tell a different story. They say they've been getting sick and so have their pets, prompting lawmakers and local officials to call for an investigation. This is so much bigger than just it in the water. Our environment, our wildlife animals, our, our farmers that have to till their soil up and do that. The NTSB is now investigating the derailment, focusing on a video showing sparks flying from the wheels more than 20 miles before it derailed. In East Palestine, Ohio, Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. A New Jersey Italian restaurant is standing by its new policy of not serving kids under 10 years old. Critics have warned the move by Nettie's House of Spaghetti will backfire. The restaurant cites noise levels, a lack of space for high chairs, and messes kids sometimes leave behind, along with the liability of children running around the restaurant. In response to the ban, a franchise owner of 36 New Jersey Applebee's says kids will eat for free. Your complete forecast is coming up next. Plus? Whether you think it's a gift or a curse, artificial intelligence programs are growing in popularity. I'm Mike Emanuel in Washington with a look at how some teachers and religious leaders are using the tool coming up. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. The warmth has been building in, and overall, it's just been a very warm start to the year and a very warm winter overall for much of the region in general. Even just looking at the past five days, we were close to seasonal on Saturday, but the improvements we made held us into the 50s, and we topped off at 71 yesterday with temperatures 35 degrees above average. We even continued those mild conditions today with still those 50s on the board. We even hold those 50s for temperatures through the overnight, so technically, today as well as tomorrow will be above average but through tomorrow we are going to be tracking changes one we've been battling some dry air which has limited our rain chances we just have had some spotty showers but the better push of moisture is coming with this warm front that's keeping us into those 50s and then we'll swing through with the cold front as we head into our friday so you see that we have these southerly winds even through about the early morning hours that 5 a.m to 6 a.m time frame you see those winds turn 
pattern from the south to come more out of the northwest. And the wind is going to be strong enough as well to bring some blustery winds, but enough that it's going to bring some rapid changes to those temperatures and then change the precipitation type along these frontal systems. So the warm front has now lifted its way north. We're in this warm and dry pocket allowing for the 50s and a few showers possible. Most of the precipitation is associated with that cold front, so there will be a few hours of some heavy rain, maybe a round of some sleet, and then we'll talk about the potential of some lake effect snow showers in place. So we have those few different rounds. Rainfall, it will come to about a quarter of an inch of accumulation. Sleet, minimal, but enough to create a slick surface. And then snowfall, mainly holds to those finger lakes with up to an inch possible. As you work through those southern finger lakes, half an inch. When you work to the border, minimal to no snowfall expected. So we'll have really all precipitation types expected again, but it's all of those precipitation types. The rain, the freezing rain, sleet to snowfall will all be possible from about that uh, 2, 3 a.m. time frame into about the early afternoon when it comes to some lingering snow showers. So it's just a few hours, and that's when we're also watching those temperatures rapidly change as we were noting that overnight forecast kept us into the 50s even through 6 a.m. And then once we had that wind switch that occurred there through that 6 a.m. time frame, these temperatures drop out of the 40s into the 30s, and we're into the 20s by the middle afternoon. Now, you see snow showers there lasting all afternoon. It's going to be pretty isolated where those snow showers are in place, mainly northern Finger Lakes, but can't rule out maybe a few flurries uh, lingering around the area. But as we have the 20s by 3 o'clock, note that, that then as we head into Saturday morning, we're down to the teens. But a quick turnaround does allow for those temperatures to warm again. We are not even below average. We have a high of 44 with returning sunshine on Saturday with breezy southerly winds. And then we'll stay mild and quiet on Sunday. But next week, we'll be tracking more chances for precipitation. Ford halts production of its F-150 electric pickups, the most expensive family vacation destination, and McDonald's adds another plant-based menu item. CJ Papa has those stories and more in today's business briefs. Ford says it expects by the end of the week to identify and correct the issue that forced it to stop production of its F-150 electric truck. Ford says an EV truck caught fire during a pre-delivery quality check. It doesn't believe the electric F-150s already on the road are affected by the issue. Luxury reseller Real Real is planning to lay off 7% of its staff. That's about 230 employees. It is also closing four stores and two offices and will cut back office space in San Francisco and New York. News by the numbers, $19,500. Zillow says that's how much singles are paying each year on average across all boroughs of New York City for a one-bedroom apartment, compared to someone living with a partner in the Big Apple. Planning a Disney World vacation? Orlando has come in as the most expensive destination. The average family of four shells out $7,350 for a seven-night stay. And McDonald's McNuggets are getting a plant-based makeover. The new McPlant Nugs are being co-developed with Beyond Meat. They'll be rolled out next week in Germany for a limited time and roll out to broader markets in the future based on demand. That's business. I'm CJ Papa. Some realtors are looking for more work or different jobs as the housing market continues to change. A report in the Wall Street Journal says the number of realtors increased in 2020 and 2021 when COVID forced companies to cut jobs. At the end of 2020, the number of realtors was greater than the number of homes available to sell. But by late last year, existing home sales dropped to its lowest level since 2014. Data also shows the membership of the National Association of Realtors dropped from 1.6 million in October to 1.5 million last month. There's a big push to move Madison Square Garden to a new location, but will it move? Linda Schmidt has more as the battle continues on MSG's future. I'm looking for our public officials to do right by the public. And by do right, he means convince or pressure James Dolan to move Madison Square Garden to Hudson Yards to make way for a new Penn Station, both underground and above on street level. Currently, MSG is taking up the space above ground. We think that there should be a great transportation network uh, housed there, and then we believe there should be a great above ground station. An above ground station similar to the Moynihan station, which is right across the street from MSG. Samuel Turvey is the chairperson of Rethink Penn Station NYC. 
And what is Dolan's response? No, I'm not going to move Madison Square Garden. Dolan emphatic on Good Day New York recently. It's in a good place right now. It's easy for everybody to get to, right? The, the, uh, and, you know, and honestly, we've invested billions of dollars into the building. Dolan is asking the city to renew the garden's special permit to operate in the city. The current permit expires in July. Mayor Adams likes MSG right where it is, but Turvey and some others want city council and state lawmakers to withhold the special permit unless Dolan agrees to relocate. I think people are just going to have to keep impressing that upon him and make him feel a little discomfort. He doesn't apparently shame easily. I get it. Uh, but I think that our elected officials are going to have to represent us. Is it okay to keep secrets from your partner? Don't go anywhere. We have the results of a new study coming up. The rise of artificial intelligence continues, with software like ChatGBT now becoming more prominent in places like schools and even houses of worship. Mike Emanuel has a closer look at how it's being used. It's actually creating right in front of you. ChatGPT is a tool that gathers information from the entire internet as well as from books and scientific journals. The program draws from its database to generate conversations, essays, poetry, and more. If you ask it to write a play about four fifth graders and here's the problem that happens, it'll do that for you. Critics warn students will be able to use the software to cheat on assignments, but some teachers say similar concerns existed about other technology and wound up not becoming a reality. When Google Drive first came out, there was that big concern, oh, kids are just going to share their docs with one another and then they're just going to copy and paste stuff from the internet and turn that in and claim it's their own work. Guess what? The more, majority of students don't do that. And while ChatGPT can produce factual and grammatical errors, some educators say this is an opportunity to teach about proper sentence structure and how to use credible sources to fact check. But the program isn't just being used in schools. I told ChatGPT to write me a sermon in the voice of a rabbi of about a thousand words uh, about the Torah portion on the theme of intimacy and vulnerability. While some religious leaders are also experimenting with ChatGPT for crafting sermons, some say there are limitations because AI can't quite understand faith. Meantime, competition in the AI market is heating up. Google recently unveiled its conversation bot called Bard, which is expected to rival ChatGPT. Mike Emanuel, Fox News. Hot off the heels of Valentine's Day, researchers at Indiana University say you could strengthen your relationship by keeping certain secrets from your partner. Marion Rafferty has the results from their study and explains why not all secrets can lead to positive growth in your love life. It may seem like a bad idea, but keeping secrets from your significant other could help strengthen your relationship. <laughs> That's according to the results of a study published in the Journal of Consumer Psychology. But researchers warn this strategy only applies to something called consumer behavior secrets, small habits you intentionally don't tell your loved one about. Maybe you have a secret chocolate stash, maybe you watched ahead on that Netflix show. What's key about these secrets is that they are so mundane that your partner likely wouldn't even care if they found out. So how does withholding the truth help you form tighter bonds? people still feel a little guilty for keeping a secret. To alleviate this guilt, they're more likely to do something to try to benefit their partner or the relationship. In fact, in one study, we found that people who recently kept a consumption secret from their romantic partner reported spending more time, money, and effort on Valentine's Day that year than they had in previous years. And why are people keeping these secrets in the first place? People might be keeping a consumption secret because they just want a moment for themselves. Or maybe their partner is dieting and they aren't. And so they want to be able to indulge in that pizza without tempting their partner away from the diet. On the other hand, researchers say large secrets like infidelity should not be kept from your partner. Food and drink were some of the top secret consumptions. The study also found clothing and jewelry purchases or participation in a hobby were other common consumer secrets. Marianne Rafferty, Fox News. We'll be back in a moment. We want to leave you with a smile. People overseas are still going on Valentine's Day dates, but these dates aren't with people. 
they're with dogs. People who come to the Philippine Animal Welfare Society, or PAWS, from now until Saturday can book a play date with any dog they pick for the equivalent of about $20. Anyone who really loves the animal they went on a date with can decide whether they want to adopt them. PAWS says it had about 240 rescue animals looking for homes. Organizers hope the event helps show people how important it is to adopt. That does it for us. I'm Jamie Holmes. Thanks so much for watching.